Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Po, and today I'm doing a review of The Goblin Emperor by Katherine Addison. This is such a wonderful steampunk fantasy of manners that is filled with court intrigue that I loved so, so much, and I want to tell you about all of the reasons why I think you should pick it up. So first, let me tell you what the story is about. We follow Maya, who is the fourth and very much unfavored son of the elf emperor. He is half goblin and sort of relegated to live in an isolated manor out in the countryside until unexpectedly his father and his older brothers all die in an accident in an airship and he becomes the emperor. So he must go to court and try to survive amongst all of the political machinations and court intrigue and find a place for himself. So now let's talk about what I loved about this book, starting with the world building. I thought that the world building in this was excellent. I really, really like the kind of intricate court politics type of world that is created. This is a low fantasy world, so there are goblins and elves, and there are some things related to the gods and spirituality, but in general, there isn't really magic in this world. Most of the world is actually much more about the society and the customs and the very intricate relationships between um, different political entities and countries. So you have a lot about the clothing and about the rules and about the social etiquette um, of this world. It's very, very intricate, especially because we're in a very formal political court setting. And Maya, who is uh, somewhat of an outsider, has to really get up to speed with all of these intricacies. And we follow him through that journey. He also has to learn so much about the different factions, the political interests, the alliances, the trade agreements, all of these sorts of things which are very confusing for him. And as the reader, we're thrown into that as well, learning as he learns. This is a story that has a ton of different characters and people and places. There is a list at the beginning of the book of all of sort of the names and places and things like that. And I found myself constantly referencing that because it is very intricate, but I feel like that is very much part of this book, part of the experience that Maya is going through. So I loved it. But if you're the sort of person who gets thrown off by a lot of names and things to keep track of, it might not be as good for you. Another aspect of the story that really worked for me is the mystery. I love mystery in SFF. Somehow that mixture works very well for me. And although the mystery that is in this book is not the driving force exactly of what the book is, I think it's a really neat component. So we have a couple of different mysteries going on. One of the big mysteries is sort of finding out what exactly happened to Maya's father and his brothers when the airship crashed. There's an investigation that goes into looking at what happened and interviewing people. So that's going on through the background of a lot of the story and it's an interesting mystery that I really liked. There's also a lot of mini mysteries relating to Maya and his relationship with other people, trying to figure out who he can trust and what people's agendas are. So there's constantly this unknown of why people are acting the way they're acting, um, what exactly is going on behind the scenes. So it's all of that court intrigue and I found that fascinating. Another aspect that really worked for me, but maybe not as everybody's cup of tea, is that this is an incredibly slow and character-focused novel. So much of this is a very much in-depth look at Maya's experience and his feelings and his relationships and his interactions with people. So even though there is that mystery plot in the background, that's the background. A lot of what you're doing in the book is just being fully immersed in Maya and his experience. And I loved that. I loved getting to know Maya. I loved getting to know the way that he interacted with people and seeing his growth as a character because when he starts he's very much naive and struggles with all of the uh, you know the way that he needs to interact with people in order to get things done and we see him grow and grow in self-confidence and grow in strength and he's also overcoming quite a bit of trauma because growing up he lost his mother and then was in the care of an abusive older cousin for many many years and so he's overcoming that trauma and learning how to be a good emperor so i loved that character arc and lastly, my favorite part of the story is just the kindness and gentleness. So Maya is somebody who really is a political outsider and he's someone who has so much heart and so much kindness um, and really he wants to do the right thing. 
thing. So a lot of this story is about a very complex and difficult and ruthless political world around him and him trying to survive long enough to do what he thinks is right. He's constantly faced with moral quandaries, has to deal with a lot of tough choices, and really stays true to what he thinks is right throughout the story. And I think that a lot of this story is about the strength and power of that kindness and of that compassion. And I don't think that Maya is portrayed as a saint. He is very much somebody who is constantly frustrated, he's resentful, he's angry, he gets petty sometimes. He's not a perfect person, but he's somebody who wants to do the right thing even though he doesn't like the situation that he's been placed in. And I loved the way that this book just showed the strength of, of friendship and kindness and gentleness even while not portraying it as something that only a perfect person can do. Overall, I think that The Goblin Emperor is just a thoroughly wonderful book that I loved being immersed in. If you're somebody who likes fantasy of manners and very slow um, world building and character focused books, for example, if you liked Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, I think this book would be perfect for you. It was such a joy to get lost in this story. I also think that if you are at all interested in following new SFF releases, this is a great book to pick up because although this is a little bit older, a new release is going to be coming in the summer of 2021, The Witness for the Dead by Catherine Addison, which is a companion novel to this and follows one of the side characters from The Goblin Emperor. So I definitely recommend picking this up. If you guys have any thoughts, if you've read this, if you want to read this, anything at all, just leave me a comment down below.